Anyway, someone I know wound up with a stroke. And he is still comatose. So I'm going to see a cardiologist, a heart doctor, as soon as I can get the money together. And yeah, I know I could get health insurance. And that might pay for the medical costs, but that costs money too. I'm not sure how I'm going to get that money together, but I'm going to try to. And until that happens, or, you know, I wind up with a stroke, I'm going to keep doing, or try to keep doing, these tutorials. Now, if you've noticed, those shadows aren't quite acting like they should, or looking like they should. That's because they're fake. There's kind of a theme going on here. I'm doing a bunch of fake stuff in the good old game engine. And these are fake shadows. Now, yeah, I know Godot Game Engine has shadows, and you can make them look really amazing. But, but like me, my frame rate wants to live. So this is a nice way to fake shadows. What we do is we have a tree set up, and yeah, I know, I'm using the basic objects and meshes in Godot. They're great for prototyping, but here I have a spatial node for the gimbal. Basically, rotational fit. It handles all the rotation, and I have a sprite 3D for the shadow. Now, the Sun Core script, which basically is just a light attached to a spatial, and I've got this mesh instance just so that I know which direction it's pointing. All it does is on the Delta Timer, it rotates on the z-axis by negative 5 degrees. That's pretty much all it does. But the tree does a lot more stuff in the shadowing script. Basically we get the gimbal node, the shadow node, the Sun Node, and the Sun Core Node. Now, the Gimbal and the Shadow is just a basic Get Node, Gimbal and Get Node, Gimbal slash Shadow. It allows us to rotate things and scale the Shadow. For the Sun and the Sun Core, we get the Tree, and we get the Nodes in Group, pun intended, and the Sun is in a group called Sun, and the Sun Core is in a group called Sun Core. And since we just have one in either group, we get the zero index. So we get those specific nodes. Now what we do is we have the shadow look at where the Sun is. And we get the gimbal position. The var g position equals gimbal dot get global transform dot origin and the sun position sun dot get global transform dot origin is gets us their global translation and then we get the gimbal and we look at well the sun. Now, don't look at the sun directly in real life, but it's perfectly fine if a node in a game engine looks at the sun for you. So, to make sure that the 
shadows, which are a child of the gimple, don't do something really weird and funky. We create a vector 3, and we get the sun's position x, the gimbal position y, and the sun's position z. So that the shadows stay laying on or close to the ground as the gimbal looks at the sun. And we use vector 3010 to make sure that the y position is our up position. And basically that allows us to have the shadow which is facing in the opposite direction to face in the opposite direction of the sun. And now here we scale the shadow and I did a lot of different things before I got the shadow scaling just right. And we get our rotational bit equals 1.0 divided by 180.0. This is so that we know how much to scale our shadow by. And the shadow is actually rotated to lay down. And we get our rotational size. We get the sun's core's Z rotation. Make it absolute. And then turn it from its radians to its degrees. The ABS basically turns negatives into positives. It turns all numbers into positive numbers. Which is good because... We want to deal with positive numbers. And then we set the scale. Vector 3. We keep the. X and Z at 1. But the Y we change. To the rotational bit times rotational size. Now. I really need to. Figure out. How to handle this for night time. Making the shadows disappear at night. but it's not really necessary. I just want them to rotate and scale for right now. And these are two print statements that I don't need. But basically we set the scale of the shadow based upon the Z rotation of the sun core, which handles the rotation of the sun itself, which we use shadow look to look at so that the shadows are facing in an appropriate position. Now in our ready function we have our startup and our set process. And in the process we just have shadow look and shadow scale. We're not really doing any of this on a timer. But in tree world we are doing this on a timer and we're going to modify them just a bit so that we have a slightly smoother rotation and now we try it the shadows rotate nicely and scale up nicely I'm still not sure how to get rid of that line at the top But in a normal game, this would actually be rotating much slower. But it allows us, at least for static objects like trees and maybe even houses, to fake dynamic shadows. You could actually do it for dynamic objects, but I'd use just a regular circular or oval shaped shadow. That way, You don't have to animate the shadow. I mean, you're free to do so if you want to. There is an animated Sprite 3D. 
and also I've used kinematics so that when the player is not colliding with the floor, the shadow can be made invisible. But that's pretty much faked dynamic shadows. If you have a game engine that doesn't allow you to have shadows or if you just don't want to deal with the massive drain on resources, this is pretty useful. The only downside is you have to have a script on every object that has a shadow. But you can use a delta timer so that they're not all running at one time. Plus, you might be able to make shadows and use fake shadows that look better than what you could do on equivalent hardware with the lighting. But if you found this tutorial instantly and yeah, interesting, then click on the su subscribe button so you can ring my bell and check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash planetkiller.